Hey everybody, my name is Shai and I'm recording this weekly reading on Sunday, March 13th. <laughs> the sun is conjunct Neptune today, which means I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> um, woke up from some very insane dreams where it was I felt like I was meeting people. The dream was full of people that I don't know and it is actually quite unusual for me to have dreams featuring people that I've never met before <laughs> and I had the distinct impression that these were the astral representations of people that I am about to meet in the physical and then I got up um, tried to make a pot of coffee because I really needed it this morning but <laughs> the coffee pot I had some kind of clog, I guess, and it just made the coffee all over the counter with the coffee grinds all over the counter. And the funny thing was I was sitting, you know, in my kitchen every morning while my coffee is brewing. I sit at my kitchen bar and draw some tarot cards to while I'm waking up. And I didn't, even though the coffee maker was making tons of noise, I didn't even look at it. I just didn't even notice. I was so out of it. And so I still haven't had my coffee. Um... But here we go, deep in the <laughs> deep in the watery depths of this Neptunian <laughs> portal, sun conjunct to Neptune in Pisces. But we are this vibe that we're in. Some people, you might be kind of like me, where you're just feeling completely out of it. Like my my mind is not online whatsoever because Mercury is also in Pisces right now too, right? So there's like no, I have like no rational, logical, linear thinking ability happening right now at all. <laughs> like at all, I'm completely out of it. And that's fine. I'm just going to roll with it. I know for many other people, the Sun-Neptune conjunction is bringing up feelings of inadequacy and imposter syndrome. If that's coming up for you, know that this is your choice point. You can continue to sit in and dwell on and worry about your feelings of inadequacy and how you feel like you're an imposter and, and all of that. Or you can just notice that this is your moment to bounce off of that and use those feelings as motivation to create something new in your life, to really go in a brand new direction and to really open up to new levels of self-empowerment and just go, okay, even if I do feel inadequate, even if I do feel imposter, feel like an imposter, what if I just go ahead and do this thing anyway and forge ahead anyway and just put myself out there anyway and really take the reins of my life and create the life that I want for myself. So that's, it's this bouncing off, literally bounce off of, bounce off of any um, of those types of feelings that you're having and just use them as fuel to fire your flame. Because, as I was saying, this week, the, by the end of the week, we're going to be in a completely different energetic position than we are right now. This is, <laughs> it's like, in one week, we're going to go from sitting in this weird, watery Neptunian vortex. The end of the week, you know, on the 18th, we have the full moon in Virgo. And that's going to be a really interesting full moon because it's sextile Pluto. The sextile is a kind of minor aspect. It's like a, it's like a lighter version of a trine. But it does mean that Pluto is influencing this full moon, kind of sending in some positive. This is, this is a, a very positive, benevolent aspect with Pluto, bringing in that positive, benevolent, transformative energy to push you in a new direction. So... I mean, a Virgo full moon is an excellent time to manifest something and to set your life in a new direction, right? To set your life in a new direction because the Virgo energy is going to be pulling us up out of the Neptunian, like, watery depths and giving us that feelings of, I want to do this. I want to create this. I'm going to look at the details. Like, if you're like me and you still need to do, you finish your taxes, excellent time to finish your taxes towards the end of this week because Virgo is going to give you the ability to really analyze and think and figure things out and look at the details, right? Um, and empower yourself to do whatever it is that you need to do in any area of your life. Do whatever it is that you need to do. That's going to be the energy towards the end of the week. So we're going to be shifting out of whatever you're feeling towards the beginning of the week with the Neptune portal. Um, and things continue after that, right? Saturday the 19th, um, Venus is square Uranus. So, okay, so that could be... <laughs> that's very interesting because Venus representing, you know, love, emotions, but also finances and you're with a square to Uranus, this could be surprises. So like <laughs> either surprises in love, these I really feel could be positive or negative. 
a surprise in love in a positive or negative way. This could be fight day for some couples, you know, to air your grievances if they've been simmering, right? This could also be surprises in love, like a new confession of love coming out of nowhere, someone confessing their love out of nowhere. This could also be a surprise bill or a surprise sum of money landing in your bank account. That is like surprises in love and money and, and good fortune and or bad fortune. It's just whatever... <laughs> Whatever has been brewing beneath the surface in terms of something that is relevant to return to you or to to come up for you, gonna happen. You know, this is all tied in towards the end of the week with the full moon. And then of course, the equinox is happening for me on Sunday. That's the equinox. That is the shift into Aries season. Um, I wrote in here, it's from because I'm in Pacific time. I'm in, you know, like Seattle time. Um, so the equinox, the exact time is 8.33 a.m. Pacific time. So people on the East Coast of North America, it's, you know, the equinox is going to be just after midnight, you know, 12.33 in the morning. Um, of course, for the rest of the planet, you're going to be having the equinox um, on the 19th, right? Adjust, adjust the times accordingly. So this whole weekend, <laughs> it's going to be super, 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 super interesting seeing all of these massive shifts. By next Monday, by the time we're, we are... <laughs> we'll have passed the Virgo full moon. We will have passed this weird squares with Uranus. And of next week, Mars is also going to be squaring Uranus. It's going to be surprises moving on into the week. And then we're going to be in Aries season. It, it's like... <laughs> Confidence is your key to success. Exactly. 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 Confidence is your key to success. So especially for anybody who is kind of sitting in that imposter syndrome or inadequate feelings, right? Confidence is your key to success. Just empower yourself and blast forward because by next week, everything is going to be different. Everything is going to be different. Uh, yeah, adjustments are required. This is the theme of the week. This is what we're doing this week. We're, we're making those adjustments. We're making those adjustments. You know, if if you're really feeling like you have adjustments to make in your life right now, like I'm really <laughs> so, so somebody's guides are really pushing me to mention journaling here if um that might help you especially with all this neptunian stuff going on if you're not sure like if you feel like you're in the mud and like the mental mud which is fine um i'm really in the mental mud right now and that's fine but journaling is can for somebody that's at least a message for one person here really really if you've been getting that message repeatedly but you've been dragging your feet about not wanting to journal you could really come to some kind of a clarity through writing down your thoughts this week. And the South Node, don't let your past hold you back because we are making those adjustments. We are, you know, confidence is your key to success. If you've, if you've lacked confidence in the past, it's time to just let that go. Um, and I, like, you know, I've really in my life struggled with self-esteem and confidence and self-empowerment and all of that. And, but I've just really been, and you know, I've had big, big, big shifts in my life with that where I've really overcome that. But I find that there's still like these little straggling strands, little straggling strands where I suddenly one day I'll wake up and I'll feel like an imposter. Or one day I'll wake up and go, oh, I, you know, this is kind of my plateau. I don't really know if I can expand beyond that. But it's like, no, you can always, always, always empower yourself to this new level. Empower yourself to this new level. Letting go of the past, letting go of the past. Um, I just, <laughs> for some of us, you know, not for everybody, because it's not going to be relevant for everybody to be like getting a new job or starting a new relationship or moving a house. But for some of us, this is going to be manifesting like that with like a big life shift where this is actually the start of a brand new life paradigm happening right now. <laughs> it's like this because we're finally coming up to the equinox, right? We're finally coming up to the equinox. That is finally gonna feel like 2022 is getting started this has been the longest slowest start of a new year that I can ever really remember feeling ever in my life and it's finally happening like I love waking up on Ari the first day of Aries season because it's like ah it's like this massive burst of energy um and like coming back to life and coming out of the fog and feeling like now I can act now I can do I love 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 Aries season in fact this whole this is, we're coming up to my favorite time of year, right? These are some of my favorite energies. We got Aries, we got Taurus, we got Gemini, we got Cancer. I love like that whole four months. That is the only time of the year where there's a whole four month stretch where I really, really love each of those energies. They're so different. I love them in different ways, but this is going to be so good. So, 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 so good. Just don't let your past hold you back. Don't let your past hold you back. This is a time for looking forward, looking forward, looking forward. 
But I will say, just for anybody seeing this at the beginning of the week, especially if you're seeing it like Sunday, Monday, when the Neptune influence is very strong, you might be thinking this is like, I'm so stuck in the past. I'm looking back, I'm taking inventory and whatever. It's like, that's fine. By the end of the week, this is gonna be shifting, shifting, shifting. By next week, you're gonna be in a completely different headspace. It's like, this is it. This is the final week of this kind of schlock. By next week, we're gonna be into an entirely new cycle of energy no longer holds power over you. Dissolve attachments of the past with love. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Mm -hmm. And um, this is interesting because if you if your past has been like wow I can't wait to put that behind me yay let, like let's move on move forward that's gonna be you know pretty uh awesome but there's this other thing going on where some of us have already been in a pretty good place and we might actually be called to let go of something that has been very good let go of something that we have loved um not in a bad way but it's like a leveling up letting go of something that has been good in order to make room for something that has been great it's like for for me um you know, if I were to move right now, like typically I'm a person who gets really excited to move. I always want to move to a new place. I want to get, like, go to a new area, a new town, a new country, even whatever. It's like, I want to go pl new places, new places. But um, where I live right now, I don't really enjoy particularly the town I live in, but I really like my apartment. This is the apartment like that I manifested. This is, this is the apartment that I've wanted my whole life. It's the only place I've ever lived in that has been nice. Like all my, I've never lived in a nice place and this place is so nice and it has little details that I love. And it, it's like proof to me that, that I manifested this. It's, it's like, it's ridiculous the story of how I ended up here, but I love this apartment and I don't want really, I, I could live here for the rest of my life and be happy, but at the same time, I know at some point I'm going to have to move from here. And even though I will be excited to level up and move beyond and go further and go somewhere new and have a new adventure, I, this is the only place I've ever lived where I'm going to look back and really miss it, really miss living here. Like my lifestyle here, it's just so wonderful and awesome and beautiful <laughs> and so for me, th this message is like, at some point we have to leave behind those things that have been really good. And it's going to be for some of us, a new experience of like bittersweet, right? Bittersweet. It, it, it's like, if you've only ever left behind things that were bad, that you were relieved, it's going to be hard to have an experience of leaving behind something that was beautiful and something good. This, so the trick there is to rem remember that you're only letting go of things that you love because they're going to just level up and you're going to receive something even better, something even better. And this is the strange thing that happens when uh, you get to the point in your life when things are finally good, <laughs> when things are finally good, there's this tendency to kind of want to stay where it's good, to stay where it's good and go like, no, nah, this is good. I'm just going to stay here. This is my plateau. This is what I've worked for my whole life. But at some point you might, uh, okay, this is, this is really big because for some people, this is going to be even, um, Wow, I'm sorry, I don't know how long that was blurry. <laughs> My hand talking makes the camera do that. For some people, this is going to be a like a rapid, okay, look, look at all these cards here, a rapid and surprising shift in direction. There could be something you have invested a ton of energy in, a ton of maybe even money in, a ton of time in, a ton of, ton of love into. You, you've invested yourself into something. You've been creating something. You've been doing this, and suddenly now you're changing directions and it can be like, but I've been doing this this whole time. This is what I was working towards. This is what I wanted. This is what I was creating. This is what I've put my life into maybe for decades even. And now it's like, but this surprise left turn or right turn, <laughs> this surprise shift into something entirely different. And it's going to take confidence and courage to know that just, okay, this was my path for a while. And now there's this abrupt shift. This is this abrupt shift. And you're just going to have to trust and remember and remind yourself that you are, that this shift will take you somewhere even better. It's like the plans that you were making, the thing that you were working on was relevant for you in the in the vibration that you were at, but now your vibration has shifted and you're like way up here. So you've opened up massive, you've opened up new timelines. You've opened up new timelines for yourself. There are brand new timelines, timelines available to you. So don't hold yourself in the timelines that you created in the past because now there are brand new timelines and they're they're higher vibrational timelines they're more expansive timelines they have more of what you want in them but so just don't hold yourself to the future that belongs to your past 
Does that make sense? Don't hold yourself to the future that belonged to your past. In the past, over the past 10 years even maybe, you've been creating a future for yourself and that you thought that was all you wanted, but now it's like it's like dream way bigger. Go way bigger than that. You've now, those dreams, they served a purpose because they were expanding your consciousness and now your consciousness has expanded so much that now you can dream even bigger. So it's like you can go so much further than you ever thought you could and you just have to allow yourself to <laughs> almost like say goodbye to those those dreams but only because you're creating even bigger dreams and the bigger dreams are going to have in it the things that you wanted they're just going to look a little different they're going to be coming in a different way maybe coming at in a different speed at a different time but it's like this way you get even more of what you wanted it's just going to be different than what you planned embrace the dark show your or shine your true light upon this earth Look at this nebula here. To me, this is what's happening um, with this Neptune portal because the sun is lighting up the collective unconscious. The sun is lighting up the collective unconscious. Shine your light on the dark. Embrace the dark. <sighs> and notice that the dark is not necessarily what you think. Right? This... There's a message here about dropping out of negative judgments you might have about like, like instinctive, like instinctive judgments you might have about darkness and equating darkness with negativity and remembering that yin and yang, right? Yin and yang, yin and yang. Yin being the darkness, the void, the ether, the divine feminine, the womb of creation right the womb of creation just think if you, when you were inside your mother's womb it was dark there right when you were inside your mother's womb it was dark there but what a wonderful place to be all warm and snugly and perfectly provided for it it, it doesn't the darkness is where things germinate right and the darkness doesn't have to be negative oh that is like such a that's going to be such a thing that's going to be such a theme for some people this week if you haven't gone through that phase of realizing that like darkness doesn't necessarily have to equate to negativity it's like um you know who who there's a guy who talks about this what's his name he he does a really cool awesome series on Gaia you know the streaming like the spiritual Netflix i can't remember his name St Stefan is his name Stefan or something I can't remember. But anyway, he, he, he really emphasizes that on Earth we have learned to equate darkness with negativity because it's like a biological thing, right? Because humans are, because our eyes, right, we see better during the day and all of our ancestors went out during the day to hunt and to forage and stuff and then at night was time for returning to the cave, to the shelter, to sleep, right? And it, it, it's like a bi just a byproduct of our biology that we learn to fear the darkness. We learn to fear the nighttime because that was when we could walk off a cliff or when we couldn't see what was out there and when we'd be afraid of the unknown because we can't see, literally just because our eyes can't see. But, you know, if you're a cat and you can you have perfect night vision, then you're not afraid of the dark because you can see what's out there. So we tend to equate darkness with negativity, with fear, and with especially with a fear of the unknown, but that's for humans, it really boils down to this biological, it's like a biological side effect of our, of our vision and the fact that we live, that we are mostly operational during the day, at least on you know, our ancestors were, right? And this is important because all of these shifts are, all of these shifts that we're going through, we are going to be walking out into the unknown, right? We are walking out into, out into the unknown. If you're starting a new relationship, that's walking out into the unknown. If you're moving, that's walking out into the unknown. If you're rapidly expanding your consciousness and having to embrace your spiritual gifts and start um, trusting the uh, communication that you're getting from the cosmos, that's also walking out into the unknown. This is all walking out into the unknown. So that's why this is embrace the dark because the darkness, the void, the ether represents the unknown. That, and that's what you're walking out into. So it's like embrace that, embrace that, embrace that. Embrace the darkness, embrace the unknown. You don't need to be able to see. You don't need to be able to see. Just remember that this um, fixation you have, this desire you have to see 
the future even to see what's in front of you because the thing even your your vision is actually kind of showing you the future your human biological eyeballs are showing you the future because you're driving down the road you're seeing what's up ahead of you you literally you're seeing your future you're seeing the what you're going to drive into right and that since we're so used to trusting that i mean i'm assuming that you know there could be somebody listening to this who maybe can't, who doesn't have, you know, vision, right? Biological vision, and that's fine. <laughs> but for the rest of us, right? Um, even myself, who ha I have a kind of not very good uh, biological vision, but <laughs> um, even even with my vision, I am used to seeing the future, my physical future, right? And so then we equate that on our our personal journeys. We we expect to be able to know what's coming up next. We expect to be able to know what's coming up next, and we feel like if we can't know what's coming up next, how are we going to navigate? But again, that that's the bias that you have learned as a human relying on your physical eyeballs, right? And it, it's kind of really time to let go of that and remember that there are so many other ways to navigate your life that don't require vision, that don't require vision and that don't require seeing the future. You don't need to know, you don't need to be able to see what's ahead of you. Yes, because it's time to do it differently, right? It's time to navigate in a new way. Time to navigate in a new way. No more comparing yourself to others. No more using your mind, letting you, trying to tell you what to do. Um, and no more n requiring vision of the future. No longer even requiring sight. Knowing that you can just walk forward and navigate with your inner compass. Go beyond what you've done before. Do something completely different. <sighs> wow, and that is right in the glare. We'll just, we'll just go like that. <laughs> Call that good. Time to do it differently. Isn't that interesting? Because if you keep doing things the same way, you're actually going to be blind. Everything's going to be this, it's going to be in the glare. If you do it differently, you might actually find that you receive the insight you desire, but in a new way. Maybe you no longer need to see what's ahead of you right? But you find a new level of confidence, trusting that you can navigate in a new way. Healing with the angel wings. This entire week, concluding a healing cycle, right? Virgo and Pisces, very, very healing energies, in my opinion. I feel like there's going to be this balance of this deep inner soul healing and then like on the other end of the spectrum this like practical applied levels of body healing for those that need it um the pisces energy bringing you through that deep spiritual healing and i think that's actually what's been going on all the way since the very beginning of the year really since the capricorn solstice in december because it's been almost four, it's been basically four months, right? This is going to be the last week. It's going to be four months of this weird kind of slow down type of inward vibe. And I was getting messages about this this morning when we are, when in our lives we go through these periods and sometimes they're excessively long periods. Like they can be, it can be like nine years of having this strange slow down this strange slow down feeling like everything is thwarting you feeling like you can't make any forward momentum and feeling like you're just stuck and you're forced to be still and that these are actually these long periods of deep 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 soul healing absolutely necessary for your consciousness and you know it's not always like a nine-year cycle um you know there can be two-year cycles it can be a four-month cycle which i think we've been in right now of this deep <laughs> deep soul healing and the Virgo full moon is bringing in the kind of like cork. <laughs> it's it's going to like top up the bottle and put the cork in. It's like finishing it, finishing the healing, bringing a conclusion to the healing. So whatever 
you have been working on healing over the past four months. The Virgo full moon by the end of this week here is going to bring you some kind of closure, some kind of conclusion about that. And it's like in the very perfect timing because then literally like two days after the Virgo full moon, it's into Aries season. And, and the Aries season is going to be time for action. Time for action. We're, we're going to be starting Aries season with all planets direct. <laughs> time for massive, massive action. Time to finally get those things in motion. Things are going to finally, finally, finally start moving and grooving for everybody. And I feel like we actually have the potential to like make big timeline jumps, like make big jumps. Something you've been working on could almost come too fast. Something could come to you right out of the blue and go, wait, 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 I've been trying to manifest this, but now it's here and no, nah, I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> Confidence is your key to success. Just get ready to jump. It's like, when an opportunity, when a surprise comes out of nowhere, get ready to just grab it. Don't doubt yourself. Trust that you've already done the work. Trust that you've already aligned it. You don't need to like have a whole humming and hawing over it. Just grab the reins and go. Grab the reins and go when it comes to you. You're going to know. It, 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 you're going to know like what to grab, right? Because it will be the very thing that you have been trying to manifest. <laughs> the very thing you've been trying to manifest. Like the new car, the new house, the move, the relationship. You're going to know because it's going to be like, wow, <laughs> I can't, I can't believe this is here so soon, so fast. Here it is. Bam, bam, bam. It's time to just grab the reins and jump right in. Our ancient future. Wow. I don't know if I've ever drawn this card before. Are you serious? Because this is the, this is the... <laughs> This is the card from the box, and I use this deck pretty frequently, and I don't remember ever drawing this before. That happens to me on a surprising number of occasions where decks I use all the time, it, it's like a card will stay hidden for one. Sometimes it's for a specific person I'm doing a private reading for. Um, a card will come out, and I'll be like, are you kidding me? How have I never seen this before? And it's like, well, it's because this card was staying in there. It was going to come out just for you. Or like right now, this card is coming out perfectly to grab my attention right now because this is this is it this is the time <laughs> for this card to blast into my awareness <laughs> our ancient future so i'm not going to read the thing from the book i'm just going to roll with the vibes i get on this wow and this is that kind of tentacle monster theme again <laughs> I, I didn't even i mean i don't think those are her tentacles they're kind of like her maybe they are I don't know if they're her tentacles or if they are her just like ferns, plants around her. But anyway, our ancient future. What I feel from this is the seeds that we have planted in the darkest of days are about to birth forth into the light. I just said birth forth. What I meant to say was burst forth, but I think birth forth is even more perfect because this embrace the dark, right? Embracing the dark, that was in the womb. The womb is dark, <laughs> but the womb is beautiful. That is where that is where you grow. That is where your seed is planted, and that is where you are. That is where you grow. And then something is about to be burst forth. Your new life, your new future, is birthing forth. And it is like it has perfectly grown from all of your pasts. I'm getting a, like an image. Let me see if I can try to describe what I'm seeing. It's like down here in the darkness and this darkness can represent, it represents the fertile ground, it's fertility, it is where something was planted. So you could think of this as a magical garden, like soil, right? The earth itself. You can think of this as the ether and the void, right? The very basic particles of creation you could think of this as a mother's womb something was like all of these different things were planted all of these it's like so many different seeds all of these different seeds all of these different intentions all of these different plans all of these different goals all of these different lessons everything all of these things were planted down here in the fertile soil and now all of these tendrils have grown up and it's like an infinite number of vines of strands of consciousness of beams of light have been growing and growing and growing and now they're all being braided together they're all being braided together and, and it's like a million strands a million different plants a million different seedlings are all twining themselves together to become something 
to become the thing they were always meant to be, but they just didn't know it. They didn't know that that was what they were meant to be. They just thought they were this little plant growing up, growing up, growing up. But now that it's like, oh, now they've reached this graduation moment. And it's like, wait, I'm actually just one strand of all of this massive vine that is all twining together in this beautiful braid, this beautiful multidimensional multi everything it's like multi consciousness multi dimensional multi physical <laughs> just everything everything all braiding together and that is this new pillar this new pillar of creation this new timeline this new timeline it's also a new timeline where all of your pasts are all braiding together creating this new future for you creating this new timeline for you and that is why it it it, it's something you could never have imagined before. You had all of these little plans, these little goals, and they didn't feel little. Maybe they felt enormous. Maybe they felt huge. But now it's brand new. It's brand new. It's so much more beyond that. This is like a quantum leap, a quantum leap into a whole brand new future that you could never even have imagined. It's like exponentially more fantastic and expansive and full of possibilities than anything you ever dreamed up before because it is an entirely new level it is it is be it's over the horizon it is over the horizon you could only see to the horizon before your goals your intentions your hopes and your dreams only went up to the horizon but now your energy is going to like rocket over the horizon on and on the other side of the horizon it's an entirely new landscape an entirely new landscape it is your ancient future being birthed into the now entirely new landscape of possibilities is opening for you. This week is the final shift into it. Next week, when we pass into Aries season, it's an entirely new ballgame, folks. <laughs> it's an entirely new future. So really enjoy this week. Really enjoy this week. Just soak it up. Like even, it doesn't even matter like what happens this week. Even if it's chaos, even if it's arguments, it's like, it doesn't matter. Just soak it up, soak it up because next week you're going to be somewhere else. You're going to be somewhere else. So enjoy every single little thing that happens this week because next week, brand new, brand new future. So I will see you guys later. I love you. I'm so excited for whatever is going to unfold. Bye.